Oh, it's cold outside. It's like 35 degrees. Hi. How you doing? What's happening? Miles the DJ here. XL Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. A little cold outside, but we're going to warm things up inside with my favorite band ever, Arcade Fire. Was that stupid? That was dumb, huh? I love that. Don't, don't use that. Don't use that. What's your history here in Minnesota? I'll be honest, I moved here two years ago from the Bay Area. I did radio out there forever. So I don't really know the history with Arcade Fire and uh, Minnesota so much. So tell me a little bit about that. Venues you played. It was our um, first show at the 400 Club? Or seventh, An early show was... 7th seventh, seventh? No, 7th seventh seventh Street Entry? That was the first show? Probably, or was, or might, I don't remember. We, I think we played both of them. Yeah. But maybe 7th Street Entry was first, and then 400 Club was later. On the funeral tour. I mean, we've been coming here yeah. for more than a decade. Yeah. <laughs> and then we played first to have at some point. Yeah. I think on the Neon Bible Tour. Yeah. With I, LCD Sound System. Like genu no, it's not true. Genuinely the wildest thing I've ever seen is Minneapolis on a Friday night in the middle of winter. And yeah. And people are like... They need De something to do. Desperate like, to be alive. Give me and something. Like, yeah, yeah. Like giant Midwesterners, like right. so, so much humanity. It's, it's, right. It's maybe the most overwhelmed I've ever been is like Minneapolis on a Friday night. Well, right. your music certainly <laughs> is something that can inspire that, right? I mean, yeah. especially watching you on stage for the last, what, 13, 14 years. There's so much that, so much passion and energy you have on stage. So to have that in the winter when it's cold and we need something to do, <laughs> like, I appreciate that mm -hmm. from you guys. Um, Roy Wilkins. Roy Wilkins Auditorium. Auditorium. Played yes. there twice. Right. Yeah. Speaking of LCD Sound System, they will be there in a week. That's where we oh, played right. with them. Right. Actually. Oh. Yeah. So if you want to come right. back and hang out, we can I'd do love that. to. Yeah. 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 They're a great band. Probably should go home. But they're, they're an all. They're an yeah. all right band. They're that's, an all right. Yeah. They're fine. Yeah. Listen, I mean, have you heard the new record? Like, uh, yeah. it's only the best thing of the uh, year. Yeah. Well, besides. Wait, hey. Wait. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually asked this. I was at. We started the interview over. One thing I really appreciate about this record, and this isn't like a backhanded compliment in any way because I've read some articles. We're coming, we're coming yeah. back. I got All you, right. don't worry. Um, but I, 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 think, I think it was Wynn that was saying things about how, yeah, people come up to me and say, hey, I actually really like this album, <laughs> right? right? And, yeah. and what bugs me about that so much is that there's a narrative of, of reviews that come yeah. out on listening to a record once or twice, and that becomes the narrative that exists yeah. for people. They're so influenced these days. And that's sort of right. what the record's about in a lot of ways for me is the culture we're living in, social media, instant gratification. What I love about Arcade Fire and this record in particular is that it's probably the first one, much like a Radiohead album for me, where I got to listen to it like five, six, seven times yeah. to really yeah. fully appreciate it, which a lot of reviewers I don't think do. But I think it's just such a testament to your band and the art that you continue to make and you push the envelope. And it's become one of my favorite Arcade Fire albums oh, wow. cool. because of that. Um, with all of the, the passion and energy that you guys put into every release, now that it's out there in the world, um, you're playing these songs live. I mean, what, what's the feeling that you're getting from the response that you're getting on stage and just the overall just sort of vibe that you're getting from the album? I've been having a lot of fun. I feel yeah. like these shows have been maybe the most fun I've had in a while playing Arcade Fire shows. It's been. I mean, particularly this setup, but mm -hmm. new songs too. Yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I was getting. It's always um, it always takes a while when you put out a record to really get into the groove of playing that record. Like sure. the first few times you play the songs live, it's like still feels like a new a new friend. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like we've we've developed pretty good relationships with 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 a lot of these songs. Yeah. I've been trying to kind of stay away from the stage setup and what what you're doing right. on this tour to be surprised. But it's in the round. Yeah. It's this incredible stage setup, unlike anything the band has ever done before. How much time and effort and, and, and thought goes into something like that? Like, I mean, the, the seeds of it were a year before we went on tour, where it was like, oh, it would be fun to, to play in the round and just like a sketch of a boxing rink, like, kind of like a boxing rink yeah. in the middle yeah. of in the round. And then that, you, you know, you're finishing a record, so it's hard to dig in artistically on the show when you're like listening to the drums and everything. But as soon as the record was done, we transitioned pretty hard into that show and into, you know, we, we always expend a lot of human hours on, yeah. mm -hmm. on that. You, you know, even if it's just a week, then it'll be like a 140 hour week. And if it's a month, then, you know, it, you, yeah. kind of, you kind of have to work really hard on it. We're, we're working with this great Montreal group um, 
Moment Factory. Moment Factory, who are who we've who have done amazing things. They do things in basilicas around the world, um, but they're they're amazing. I mean, they're a world class technical artistic organization, um, and they they really have made the stage show happen. Like we were like, here's a here's like a sketch and a napkin, and they're like, okay. here's a fourteen page PDF yeah. like presentation. And you're like, that is all very beautiful. How yeah. much does this cost? Okay, right. let's not do that. How much does this cost? Okay, let's not do that. Make How much does this cost? Yeah. Oh, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but no, what comes first? Is there a concept that comes first? Does the music come first? Does it all kind of happen at once? You mentioned that you were yeah. coming up with the stage setup as you were making the record a little bit. So what's that process exactly? I think it all evolves kind of in, in, you know, in tandem with each other. Like, you know, like one idea, like we'll be working on something on the record and then somebody's like, you know, it'd be cool live if we did this thing. And then you keep working on the record, but that's in the back of your head, and mm -hmm. you know, and it kind of roll. It's like a snowball that way until until you get to this point. Cool. And all the songs are done, and the tour's happening. <laughs> How's it been going so How far? How did I get here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, Whoa, yeah. Days go by. No one stopped this. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> My God, what have I done? <laughs> yeah. What's well, been the highlight so far on the road on this record? I've been having a lot of fun doing these in the round shows. Like it, it's kind of been exciting to have that concept happen mm -hmm. and we, d we did a uh, handful of these in tiny venues in Europe this summer we were like that really works yeah and then we moved it to the arena yeah and it's been yeah. yeah yeah doing the actual boxing rings in in London or in the UK was fun we did York Hall in London which was it's like an old boxing gym and that okay. was a lot of that was a lot of fun really vibey where does the boxing ring idea come from Someone just threw that out as a concept for playing in the round. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh, we could all stand in there and try to, how, you know, how could we configure ourselves so mm -hmm. that would work. We're pretty physical performers, yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't crazy. And then you're playing, you're like, we're like literally in the hockey dressing room, like with the showers and yeah, everything. Sure. The lockers, definitely something yeah. Yeah. of that world, yeah, present already. Um, we're more of a sports team at this point than a band. <laughs> There's a lot of you. Yeah. You know, you got you got, you got bench players, you got starting five, you got yeah. you know, crew, the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Coaches. Do you guys um do you guys think about your legacy at all when you're making these records? One thing I think is very interesting about Arcade Fire is you look back at some of these bands from the seventies and eighties, and at the time I don't know if they were really considering the fact that like a clash or a Led Zeppelin, hey, one day ten year old kids are gonna discover this music and kinda give them a whole new life. It kinda seems like Arcade Fire is now one of those bands that generations coming up are always going to discover and they're always going to find. Like I think in hindsight everything now is going to be considered to be one of your masterpieces of a record. Is that something you guys think about as you're making music at all or have you pondered that when you're on stage or just living it in this moment? To me it's too abstract. Like I, I can't see myself, like personally I don't know if I can't speak for everyone in the band but I, I don't like, my mind doesn't really go there so much. Like I. I do think a lot about the record that we're making or the music that we're making and whether it sounds good and whether I sure. like it. Yeah. And that's kind of my guiding light. Like, if I start thinking about leg like, legacy to me is so someone else's problem. Like, yeah. I can't think about it. It's I mean, kind of relative. Yeah. It's I mean, I, relative. I think I, I, only by analogy, I'm, I, I was born two years after London Calling. Like, I, you know, I bought all the Pixies CDs in the late 90s. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that's when I yeah. discovered the Pixies, yeah. when I was 16. Mm -hmm. And now we're freaking playing with the Breeders. <laughs> and yeah. It's, like, that's gotta be wild yeah. for that's you. That's amazing. Like, yeah. that's, that's crazy. Really amazing. Yeah. Uh, how many shows have you played with the Breeders? Who was this is our first one we're doing today in Oh, lovely. Yeah. Okay, cool. I love that band. That's, yeah, they're so yeah, good. They're it's gonna be fun. We just heard them sound checking. You know, yeah, they were great. Yeah, we were hearing that too. That was cool. That was good times. Um, Speaking of legendary artists and, and bands that we've grown up listening to, uh, a lot of history with Arcade Fire and David Bowie. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of wrote down David Bowie in my notes in my head. I had no question, but David Bowie, mm -hmm. you guys collaborated a, a couple times. What was that like? Fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, that was cool. And that was pretty early too, right? I mean, he was a really early fan of you guys. Yeah, yeah, it, it, was, it was amazing. He was like, uh, you know, hearing, especially when you start playing and he, he sang and you were like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Now, what he brought to Reflector was incredible as well. Yeah, yeah that was a very cool, very cool record. How did that come together? Getting David Bowie on board with Reflector and doing some background vocals for that. Um, we met him. We met him on the funeral tour. Both him and David Byrne came to a show at Irving Plaza when we were playing there. So it was yeah. both DBs. 
And so we just met him, and he like was like, "Hey, come out to dinner," and we just had dinner. And he, I mean, he treated us like peers. Sure. And so we're yeah. like, "Okay, if you treat us that way, then I guess it's okay," because I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But but, yeah. but then we had a very comfortable human relationship, while at the same time, every once in a while, being like, "That's David Bowie." Yeah. yeah. Um, That's gotta be wild. That's gotta be crazy. But yeah, and it and mm. it. It made sense in Reflector when we called him up and he came to the studio and he was like, oh, last time I was here, this was Electric Lady in New York, he's like, last time I was here, I was in the A room in the basement and it was when John Lennon was doing the backing vocals on Fame. <laughs> like, no big deal. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. You want to do backing vocals on this song now? Like that? <laughs> okay. Good. And there were like technical problems too and he was telling great stories. Like he told this one story about when he was playing a show, I think in New Jersey and uh, Elvis was playing at Madison Square Garden that night. Okay. And this was like during Ziggy Stardust. David Bowie, and he got off stage, and he was like, I can make it to the to the Elvis show. So he got in a car, went to Elvis, went to the MSG, got there in the middle of Elvis's set, but he was still in full Ziggy Stardust, like oh, outfit. And he like walked, he walked in and like tried to take his seat subtly, but he could see Elvis was just like glaring at him <laughs> while he was saying like, you asshole. <laughs> this must have been like, like Fat Elvis era too, right? This was like later Elvis, I would imagine. Like mid seventies, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, mid seventies Elvis. Early, okay, early seventies. Yeah. 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 yeah, good times. What's next for the band? Um, I've heard some rumors. I've heard. I've read some stories. I, I think I read a quote. Correct me if I'm wrong. About what? About um, like this might be the last big Arcade Fire tour for a while. Um, Is that something I heard? Again, I'm just. I'm I think we've the internet. said that every. I think we've. Yeah, said we're that every like time. we're we're really just kind of still touring. Like we haven't gotten. We are, we really haven't. We have no idea what's coming next. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, I yeah. look forward to it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for the time here at the XL Energy Center. In the bowels and some backstage yeah. area. Yeah. It's good times. Windowless room. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Miles the DJ with Arcade Fire.